Hi! Have you ever been watching a game of Professional League of Legends and found yourself thinking, I have no idea what's going on in the draft? Well, do I have a video for you. Yo, what up? How's it going? And welcome back for another video. Today's video, we're going to be focusing on um, the draft phase of League of Legends. So explaining to you how the draft works. If you find yourself very confused whenever it's happening, you're like, why isn't my favorite player playing a carry champion right now? So kind of explaining what that looks like in a professional setting, not for solo queue, not any of that stuff. Uh, you should figure that out. Uh, there's probably plenty of videos for that out there. That's not what we're gonna talk about today. So in this video, what I'm going to talk about is I'm kind of explain kind of how it works a little bit, but the main thing I'm gonna be focusing on is the strength and weaknesses, a blue side, red side, and when when a team should pick blue, when a team should pick red, or when the meta is blue side favored, red side favored. Because I'm sure you probably heard that if you watch a lot of games or say, yeah, this meta is really blue side favored. Or it's very interesting they picked red side this game. So I hope in this video I can explain that. So let's get right into it. Okay, so I made this little chart infograph thingy uh, that kind of shows the strengths, weaknesses of each side. And so let's just go ahead and talk about it. So if you didn't know, blue side is going to be on the left side. Red side is going to be on the right side whenever you're looking at pick and ban. Uh, the way that looks on the map is blue side is the bottom side. Um, when you're looking at the mini map, blue side is the bottom side, red side is the top side, and that'll be reflected by the colors of the turrets and everything like that. Whenever you're watching a pro game, I think whenever you're playing by yourself, it's uh, the colors are just uh, blue if you're the home team, I think. I'm not completely sure. All right, so let's just look at uh, some of the strengths of each each side. So strength of blue side is you get the first pick. So whenever you're watching the draft, blue side will always get first pick. So left side will always get first pick. They get the first, they get the second pack of duo picks. What I mean by duo picks is um, I call or I call them duo picks or bundles. So it'll go blue side one, red side two, back to blue side two, um, and then red side one. So you get one, they get one two, and then you get two three. And then um, they get their three. So one, one, two, two, three, and then three over here. Um, cool. So you get the second duo pick. And uh, I mean, first pick is pretty pretty self-explanatory. That's a big one. I got to talk about, talk about that more. So first pick is very important whenever there's champions that your team specifically high, highly prioritizes. Or if there's not, um, or if flex picks are really strong. We'll talk about that later. Um, but for example, like in the current meta in summer, summer 2019, if you can first pick a Kali, that's great on blue side. So if you can first pick a Kali, that's great on blue side because the Kali is so powerful right now. Um, cool. So now we have the second duo pick. So we just talked about that. So second duo pick is nice because if you, you can already see a lot what they have and you can maybe counter in the first phase with the second duo pick. Um, cool. You get last pick in the first phase. So in the first phase, you get last pick. So if they already show their solo laners for whatever reason, you can go ahead and counter pick that. A lot of times, teams on red side will go ahead and pick their entire bottom line um, as their duo. So you can pick your bottom line uh, that maybe counters them. So if they pick a Zyra Khan, maybe you, uh, they pick a Zyra Khan, maybe you get like Leona Draven, you know, and try to bully them in the landing phase, which normally Zyra Khan wins the landing phase. So that could be something that you could do right there. Um, this is something less talked about and less important, but map geography. So map geography. So you have a safer top side when you're, when you're on blue side. So meaning that the way the map geography looks like, you don't have the bush behind you. So if you're on blue side, so that's the bottom side of the map. Whenever you push forward on your turret, um, you can only get really ganked from river or if they go behind your wall and jump over the wall, or if they jump over your tower, they have to take two tower shots before they actually... Um, hit you or depending on the champion sometimes they don't have to so it's somewhat safer to play weak side on top lane or to play aggressive if your jungler is going to play around if the jungler is going to play around them um, it's kind of like a safer side it's harder for the jungler to get behind you and dive you um, or it's not as safe for the jungler to get behind you um, the other thing is map geography safer for baron exit so meaning that whenever you're whenever you're fighting baron and the enemy team has to come um, so you're on the bottom side of the map. The pit is right here, the semicircle. Then you are coming behind, or you are attacking the Baron facing forward. And then when you exit, you walk back. You walk back that direction. But if you are on red side, when you fight the parent, Baron and the enemy team comes and confronts you from their side of the map, and you're the red side team, then you're gonna have to get over this wall to get out. So you can be kind of funneled in there. So it's a little bit of a safer Baron exit as well. That's less talked about. Um, cool. So let's talk about strengths of red side. So strengths of red side, you get last pick, counter pick. 
So uh, we'll talk about why that's important later at the end. So you get last pick, so you can counter pick a solo laner, uh, or you can you know maybe save your jungler for last. Most of the time you counter with a solo lane pick, um, or a lot of times it depends on what uh, kind of what your team needs and stuff like that. So uh, you get last pick, a uh, last pick counter pick. Uh, you get the first duo pick. So um, so remember like we talked about, blue side's gonna get the one. You're gonna get one two on your turn. So if you're on the red side team. So you get that one two, so you can pick a powerful duo. So this is great when duos are really strong. So um, you get like a Zyra Khan, a Sona Tarek, or a Sona Tom Kinch. Um, you know, when there's really, really powerful duos, um, it's great to nab them up right there. Maybe you get like a Gragas Yasuo or something like that as well. Um, cool. You get first pick in the second phase. So the way the draft will work is you'll do your first phase bans, the picks right there. And then when you get to the second phase, the bans will happen. It's kind of less important which order those are in, but um, the bans will happen. And then you'll get, on red side, you'll get first pick, and you'll just get one, so you get the four. And then and then blue side will have to take four, five. And then you will get to take five after your, everything is shown in the game. So, um, But it's also important that you get first pick in the second phase, because now you've seen everything that's banned, and maybe uh, you banned and they banned, and now you have a good pick. Uh, so maybe counter something in the first phase, or you you ban the counters for your fourth pick that you're going to pick right there. Uh, so uh, sometimes it's strong to have that as well. Okay, the map geography is something less talked about. So map geography, so you have a safer bottom side. Uh, you can have a safer bottom side. So what I mean by that is kind of the same logic that falls falls before. It's harder for the enemy jungler, or not as safe for the enemy jungler to actually get behind you and actually execute a dive uh, because um, because you don't have that tri bush behind you, you do have that one. Uh, you do have that one bush behind you if you're just getting constantly shoved in and the mid lane runs on you. So that can happen. But it's safer in the sense of if you want to play really aggressive. Really, the enemy jungler has to access you from the river. So just like on top side, so your team can protect that from happening and you can play aggressive. Um, or if you're just trying to play kind of kind of like an even lane state. If you're just at an even lane state, it's kind of hard for the enemy to get behind you. Um, if they do, they usually have to take two tower shots if they want to get behind you to do that, or you have to be fully shoved in, and they have to be able to enter your jungle. Cool. All right, let's talk about weaknesses of each side. So weakness of blue side, we already talked about it. These weaknesses are small because we already talked most about the strong points. So it'd be kind of silly if I just put the opposite of the strong points on the weaknesses. But the big thing about uh, blue side is the big weakness is you get counterpicked. So, um, so the big, the big one is you get counterpicked. So if there's not a lot of flex picks or, uh, let's say you draft like an Aatrox, Aatrox Pryo, and you're like, you're like, Aatrox is so strong in this meta, you pick Aatrox. And then the enemy team has a great Fiora player. They pick Fiora and you get slammed, uh, by the Fiora and you, you just get 4-1 to death, uh, 4-1 to death by the enemy Fiora. Uh, then that feels real bad. So you got counterpick. So counterpick is the obvious weakness. Map geography, just like we talked about, can be a weakness, can be a strength, just depending on what you what your team prioritizes and what the necessarily uh, meta is to play. Um, cool. Uh, red side, some weaknesses um, is you give away high prio champ. So if a Kali is like, let's say a Kali, I just keep bringing up Kali because she's always very important. She's very important in a lot of meta. So let's say a Kali is like super important in the meta um, and he's super important for both teams then uh, if you leave it open, then blue side gets to get it. Uh, currently in, in summer of 2019, Akali doesn't have a lot of counter picks so, um, in the game that are actually meta. So you give away the Akali, that, that kind of hurts real bad. And maybe maybe they maybe they even flex the Akali. You don't flex the Akali too much anymore though. Uh, map geography, just like we talked about before. Um, just like we talked about. Cool. All right. So when to when should a team pick blue side? When is blue side strong? So when is blue side strong? So I'm gonna be talking. I'm gonna be generalizing very big. So this is a very generalization of when to pick blue side, when to pick red side. Teams can specifically want any want a side or specific metas and specific regions can want a specific side for a very specific reason. Maybe they have a matchup that they that they really want. Uh, based off of <clears throat> maybe your bottom laner is way better than their bottom laner, and so you want a specific side for that reason. Um, and there's a pick that you have in mind. So I'm going to be generalizing. So let's talk about when do you blue side. So when to blue side. The blue side, um, you want to blue side whenever flex picks are really strong. So flex picks, uh, these are a bunch of different reasons, but when flex picks are really strong, so is blue side. Um, so for example, 
when we were at Worlds, um, there was a lot of flex picks. You could take uh, you could take Aatrox, you could take Aurelia, you could take Akali, you could take Urgot, you could take them all in two different roles. So you can you can first pick one of those champions. Let's say three of them get banned out. Let's say this happens. This is like the dream scenario. Three of them get banned out, and then there's only let's say there's just the Akali left over. You take a you take the Akali, um, you take the Akali, and you can flex it to either lane because she's really powerful in both lanes. It doesn't have a huge amount of counter picks. So uh, you actually can kind of almost ensure you don't get counterpicked. Um, because if the enemy ends up having to show their solo winners, because you keep banning out all the strong champions, they end up having to show their solo, solo winners, then you actually won't get your solo winners counterpicked at all because you'll just take your other solo winner at the five. Let's say you get, you know, a Kali and another flex pick. I can't think of a flex pick outside of the ones I said that you'd get later in the draft. And they'll have no idea where you're going. And let's say they don't have similar counterpicks. So you can just... Uh, pick the map on which side you want. So flex picks are strong. Um, if there's few OP picks, so so what I mean by that is, let's say you're in the current meta we are in right now. I'm I'm of the opinion that there's not a lot of uh, a lot of really strong picks. There's a lot of there's a lot of good picks, but there's not a lot of really strong picks. I'm gonna keep bringing up a Kali. So um, in this meta, it's great to first pick a Kali. If you're on blue side and you get a Kali, that's that's a W. Because um, you pick a Kali, she doesn't have a whole lot of now, known counters, and you're really not giving up too much um, if you're on blue side and you have uh, and there's not a whole lot of great picks. It's really just more important to have good matchups, and that can be a good thing. Obviously, it's easier to get good matchups on red side. Um, <clears throat> but what I mean by this by this point is, if there's few OP picks and there's there's one left that you know you can get, there's like an OP pick that you know you can get and doesn't have really known counters and you're not scared of getting it. Uh, and if you get that pick, you're not scared of anything else. So let's say a Kali is very important for both teams. You get a Kali, um, and then they don't have any any counters for it, then then you won that phase of the draft, right? So a few OP picks uh, for the teams or in the meta, and you happen to get the one of the few OP picks, then you're not giving anything away, and they can't counter on red side. Um, cool. So a powerful weak side champ or player it's good on blue, blue side, so um, if you are a team that doesn't want blue side, or west side, blue side's not really that good uh, in general, but if you end up getting blue side, um, and there's a really powerful weak side champion in the game, so what I mean by weak side is, you know, the side that your team's not going to play around, or in general, um, the player the player or the champion you're comfortable getting counterpicked. So a, a really strong uh, weak side champion is Gangplank. So Gangplank's great at playing weak side, so he's sort of difficult to dive because he has his oranges, right? So he's sort of difficult to dive, and he has a global ultimate, and he scales super well. So you can lose lane on Gangplank and still be super, super useful. Um, so that'd be a champion that's great on weak side. So if you have a great weak side player and you end up taking blue side, uh, you can get Gangplank early in the draft. And um, that'd be a good good point right there. Another good weak side champion that, isn't, that a lot of people don't really think are weak side champions um, is Renekton. Renekton's a great weak side champion. He's really hard to dive, and um, he's really hard to dive, and hardly has any losing matchups. So if you end up getting a losing matchup. Uh, it's not very likely to get a losing matchup, so you can take him early in the draft. And he's really, really difficult to dive. And with the current itemization and summer playoffs, uh, Renekton is able to actually scale into the mid game. Um, so he's a very good weak side champion. So if there's a lot of weak side champions that are powerful and you have a good weak side player, then blue side's not so bad because you're comfortable with them getting counterpicked. So you take your prio pick at one and then you're comfortable with them getting counterpicked. So you get the Gangplank or you get the Renekton, something like that, and you're you're comfortable with them losing that matchup because it's a good weak side champion. That's a good weak side player. Um, so comfort for a player uh, sometimes is good on blue side. It's also good on red side, depend, depend, depending on the situation, but... Comfort for a player, so let's say you have a player that you have to sub in that is really only good on like two picks. So let's say they're they're really only good on Aatrox. Um, and Aatrox is a pretty powerful pick, but it gets counterpicked all the time. But they're really good on, they, they really can play in the team fights. And if they don't get Aatrox, they're going to be a liability for your team. So you get the first pick, you pick Aatrox. All right. Uh, all right, Fate God, you're playing Aatrox. Um, and we got him playing Aatrox, and we don't have to worry about him. He's going to lose lane, but, you know, he's going to be playing Aatrox, and he's going to be doing good. But if we give him Renekton, he's going to get shit on. We give him Fiora, he's going to get shit on. So um, I just kind of brought up Fake God, but I didn't, I didn't mean to flame that guy at all. Um, I don't even know what champions he's good at, to be honest, um, or bad at. 
So that'd be a, that could be a situation where you'd want to do that. You want to make sure you uh, pick a super early or you pick it on the second duo pick. Uh, so hopefully maybe they show they already show uh, the lane that you want to pick for and you can pick a, a comfort champion for them based off of the matchup. So they're like, oh yeah, this matchup, I, I can play this fine. <coughs> but also you can do that on the uh, red side, obviously, um, if you use red side counterpick for that. Cool. All right, let's talk about when to red. Uh, so when when to red side and when is red side good? So red side is good and when uh, whenever uh, pro champions have counters. So uh, the highest priority champion in the game, if the only high priority champion in the game, um, you bring up Aatrox again, is Aatrox. You got a good Fiora player, you got a good Jax player, you got a good Kled player, champions that do well into uh, the Aatrox, then, um, then you're comfortable with them getting the high prior champion, you leave it open, they take it, and you have a counter pick for it. You maybe you have like four counter picks for it, and you're comfortable with that matchup, so you take it. Um, so when prior champions have counters, so you know what the enemy is going to prioritize, and you can counter them easily in your draft or last pick it. Um, actually, utilize the power of having your red side. Um, cool. When there's plenty of OP, so there's plenty of OP champions. So for example, um, I think. Um, when there's plenty of OPs and when there's not all the OPs, but if you're like, let's say you're on red side and you just don't, let's say there's, let's say we're in world's meta and there's Aatrox, Akali, Urgot, and Irelia, which are like crazy overpowered. LeBlanc was also strong. Uh, let's say you just don't ban, let's say you just don't ban any of them. And so you force the blue side team to ban, to, to ban some of them. And now there's, there's five, so I'm counting the LeBlanc. Uh, so you force them to ban, but they can't do that because maybe you have a great Heimerdinger player, right? And they need to ban the Heimerdinger. So they have to ban the Heimerdinger. They have to ban two OPs, and then they leave They they leave two or three of these big OPs open. So there's the Urgot. Let's say the Urgot, Aatrox, and LeBlanc's left over. Um, so the enemy takes the Aatrox. You get Urgot and LeBlanc, um, which are the two, two of the OPs left. So when there's plenty of OPs, you're comfortable with giving one away. Um, when there's not a lot of OPs and there's a lot of just okay champions, it's also good on red side because you can counter pick, uh, cause you can just play to counter pick. So, um, red side isn't super great when there's a lot of flex picks. So like world's meta, I think blue side was probably better because there was a lot of flex picks, but if those power picks aren't flex picks and there's plenty of them, uh, then it's really good to have red side cause you can also get the power picks and then you can counter pick, uh, the other one. Um, it's good to have red side whenever you have a specific player matchup. So I talked a little bit about this on blue side. But let's say your um, let's say your bottom laner and your support are way better than their bottom lane and support. Okay, um, and I'm gonna talk more about this in a minute. So you're gonna let them have the Aatrox or whatever, and you're gonna take Xyrocon and or you're gonna take Draven Morgana. You're gonna take uh, Caitlyn Morgana, and you're just gonna slam them in the lane, and you don't care what they pick for it. Um, so you're just going to slam in the lane. Or if uh, you're going to get your counter pick for, let's say you have Keen, a carry top laner, and you just want him to have the best matchup as possible because you know you're going to play through him. So you save your last pick and counter pick whatever they got. So you save him to be the Fiora player, right? Um, you save it for last pick and make sure it's a good game for a champion that he can play. Um, cool, so like a specific player matchup. If you know your, your, your player is way better than theirs, then um, and maybe you want to counter pick for it, or maybe you just want to let them get counter picked, and then you counter pick for another player. Uh, then that could be really good as well. Okay, so powerful duos in the game. So if there's Zyra Khan, Sona Tom Kinch, Sona Tarek, um, those can all. Uh, so you get the first duo pick. So if they pick their power pick, and then we have Zyra Khan open. You take Zyra Khan, or you take Sona Tarek. You take Sona Tom Kinch. You take Varus Tom Kinch. So there's really powerful duos in the game. Uh, you can pick Gragas Yasuo, right? You take that right afterwards, and you can be in a good position. All right, uh, bot and early neutral prio. So this is a little bit more nuanced, but um, you know, obviously, I said it's a little bit safer if you have river control uh, for bot side to push, uh, push more and play more aggressive. Let's say you have a Caitlyn Morgana, you just want to slam them in lane. Uh, your jungler is playing around your side of the map. It's really safe for that. You rotate over. You can take easy dragons. You take their tower early. You rotate your Caitlyn Morgana top side. You rotate your jungler up there, and then you take Rift Herald. You take top tower. So if you want to play really aggressive on your bottom side, I think it's really good to be on red side. If you want to play super aggressive on bottom side, um, in the end, that's just me. Okay, again, remember this was a generalization of a lot of stuff. Uh, this was mainly for people who don't quite understand the draft phase. 
and wanted to learn a little bit more about it. Uh, kind of wanted to know what's going on. This isn't a really nuanced or advanced thing. This is more just explaining um, from the viewer's perspective what's going on, what the analysts are talking about, because I think a lot of people really get confused when the analysts start talking about things. I know I used to um, w way back when I started watching. So anyways, I hope this explains stuff. That's going to be it for the video. Bye-bye.